Pythagoras and the Ratios A Math Adventure by Julie Ellis, illustrated by Phyllis Hornung Peacock Pythagoras and the Ratios A Math Adventure by Julie Ellis, illustrated by Phyllis Hornung Peacock Long ago, in ancient Greece, there lived a curious boy named Pythagoras. He liked finding out how things worked, which sometimes caused him to forget to finish his chores. One day, Pythagoras had just finished proving that rocks cannot float when he heard a deep and horrible howling sound. Zeus's beard, he yelled. What is that? He followed the sound to the top of a hill overlooking the harbor. Octavius, said Pythagoras to his cousin, were you making that awful noise? Unfortunately, yes, Octavius said, nodding. I made these new pipes for the music contest. They sound so bad that my parents sent me outside to practice. If I can't figure out what's wrong, I won't be able to compete in the contest. Let me try, Pythagoras suggested. He played the same awful sounds. By Apollo's hammer, that is terrible. Well, Octavia said, at least it isn't me. It's definitely the pipes. Hmm, I wonder how they are different from mine, Pythagoras said to Octavius. I'll get my pipes and measuring cord. Can you get a stylus and a clay tablet? Pythagoras measured the length and width of each pipe. Octavius used the stylus to scratch the measurements into the clay tablet. Pythagoras's pipes are 24 units by 2 units, 20 units by 2 units, 18 units by 2 units, 16 units by 2 units, 15 units by 2 units, and 12 units by 2 units. Octavius's pipes are 49 units by 4 units, 43 units by 4 units, 37 units by 4 units, 33 units by 4 units, 32 units by 4 units, and 25 units by 4 units. Look at how the length of the shortest of my pipes compares to the longest, Pythagoras said. Octavius, write the length of each of my pipes above the length of the shortest. Octavius wrote 24 over 12, then 20 over 12, and so on to compare the other five pipes to the shortest one. We can simplify these numbers, Pythagoras said, if we divide the top and the bottom numbers by the greatest common factor. For 24 over 12, I can divide them both by 12. For each pair, Pythagoras figured out the biggest number that could go into the top and bottom numbers. I wonder if the relationship among my pipes is what makes them sound so good together. Pythagoras compared the two sets of pipes. Each of your pipes is exactly twice as wide as mine, he said, but they are more than twice as long. Pipe 6, the smallest relationship to the smallest is 24 over 12, and 24 divided by 12 and 12 divided by 12 is 2 to 1. Pipe 5 is 20 over 12. 20 divided by 4, because 4 is the greatest common factor between 20 and 12, and 12 divided by 4 is 5 to 3. Pipe 4, 18 over 12. 18 and 12's greatest common factor is 6, so 8 divided by 6 and 12 divided by 6 is 3 to 2. Pipe number 3 is 16 over 12. 16 and 12's greatest common factor is 4, and 16 divided by 4 is 4, and 12 divided by 4 is 3, so the relationship is 4 to 3. And pipe 2 is 15 over 12, and 15 and 12's greatest common factor is 3, so we've got 15 divided by 3 over 12 divided by 3, which is 5 to 4, and pipe 1 is 12 over 12, the greatest common factor of both of those is 12, which is 12 divided by 12, so 1 to 1. The relationship that we've discovered works for my pipes. Maybe it'll work for yours, too. 
We can't change the width of your pipes, but we can change the length. Let's cut your pipes so that each one is exactly twice as long as mine. Cut them, Octavius cried. But what if it sounds worse? Believe me, Pythagoras said, nothing could sound worse. Pythagoras cut Octavius' pipes, and then Octavius played them. Now your pipes sound like mine, Pythagoras said, only yours still sound deep while mine sounds lighter. I'll bet that's because your pipes are wider. I wonder what mine would happen if we played at the same time. No one plays pipes together, answered Octavius. It sounds horrible. Pythagoras shrugged. It couldn't be worse than how you sounded earlier. Octavius agreed. Do you know Ode to Apollo? Pythagoras nodded, and they began to play. The sounds were in tune. It worked, Pythagoras said excitedly. The lengths of the pipes control how high or low the sound is. Here comes Amara and Reina, Octavius said. Let's hear what they think. That sounded excellent, but we've come to warn you, Pythagoras, you're in trouble, his cousin Amara said. What have I done now? Pythagoras asked. Nothing, Raina said. That's the trouble. You were supposed to help your father gather olives today. Oh, no, I forgot all about it, Pythagoras cried, and he ran toward the olive grove. Father, Pythagoras gasped, I'm so sorry I forgot about the olives, but I made an amazing discovery. I know how to tune pipes. You need to tune your responsibilities, his father replied sternly. Now fill this painter with olives and then come home. Pythagoras had just started to work when Amara and Reina found him. We were trying to play our leers together, said Amira. But they sounded awful. Can you fix our leers like you did Octavius' pipes? Reina asked. We want to prove to our brothers that we are good enough to enter the music contest, too. Help me pick these olives, Pythagoras said, and I'll try and figure out your liras. When the pannier was full, Pythagoras led the donkey home. Then Amara and Reina showed their leers to Pythagoras. It may be that the relationship between each lyre string has to be the same as the relationship between the length of my pipes, Pythagoras said. We just have to figure out what the relationship is. But lyre strings are all the same length and thickness, Reina said. Yes, Pythagoras agreed, but something else about the string has to change. Just then his mother walked in. Pythagoras, she said. The mason is coming tomorrow to rebuild your wall. Please move the rocks out of the way and sort them into piles by size this afternoon. Pythagoras told the girls he'd see them later and went to work sorting the rocks. Suddenly he had an idea. Rocks are different weights, he said excitedly. Maybe putting different weights on the strings would have the same effect as changing the lengths of the pipes. Pythagoras weighed rocks until he found some with a two-to-one relationship to use for the first and last strings. Then he found four others with the same relationships as the middle pipes. I can't wait to test my idea, Pythagoras thought as he went for dinner, forgetting about moving the rest of the rocks. The next morning, Pythagoras went looking for Reina and Amara. They had already left for the marketplace. He was sure they wouldn't mind, so he went and got their leers. He untied the strings on Amara's lyre and tied a rock to each one. Then he plucked each string and played his pipe. The notes matched. Pythagoras was working on Reina's lyre when the girls returned. What are you doing? Amara cried. I figured out how to make the lyre sound match my pipes, Pythagoras answered. The relationship between the weights and these rocks is the same as the relationship between the lengths of my pipes. How can I play the lyre with rocks swinging back and forth hitting me? Amara complained. We need the rocks in order to make the right amount of pull on each string. You'll just have to be careful when you play so the rocks don't hit you, Pythagoras said. I think it's interesting, Raina said. We'll be the only girls with rocks on our lyres. 
The girls tested their leaders by playing a song. Pythagoras joined in on his pipes. That was beautiful, Raina said, smiling. I've never heard anything like it, Amara agreed. Let's find Octavius, Raina said. Then all four of us can play together in the contest. The judges might not let us, Pythagoras said. It'll be a secret, Amara burst out. I'll find Octavius and ask him if to join us tomorrow to practice before the contest. Great! Pythagoras exclaimed. I can't wait. When Pythagoras got home that evening, his father was waiting for him. Today the mason went home because the rocks were not moved out of his way, his father said. Your mother asked you to do that yesterday. Pythagoras tried to explain. When I felt the weight of the rocks, I got a great idea. It was the solution I needed, and now when we play the contest, stop right there, Pythagoras and take note of what I say. I know the contest is important, but so are your responsibilities. You may not go anywhere until you move all those rocks. Father, please, Pythagoras pleaded. There's not enough time to move them before the contest. It's the only way you'll remember to finish your chores the next time you're distracted by a new idea, his father replied. Early the next morning, Octavius found Pythagoras moving rocks. Amara told me the plan, Octavius said. I can't go, Pythagoras explained. What happened? It'll take me too long to move these rocks. I'll help you, Octavius said. Look, here comes Thanos and Ionius. They might help us too. We've come to tell you that our sisters won't be joining you, announced Thanos. We don't want them to embarrass the family by trying to play their leers together, Ionius added. They won't, Pythagoras answered. Just listen to this. He and Octavius played Ode to Apollo. That actually sounded good, Ionius exclaimed. I liked it too, Thanos added. I'm sorry, we started on the wrong note. Can we join your group? I would have to fix your pipes, Pythagoras said, but I can't do that until I move all these rocks. We'll help you, Thanos said. We'll get Amira and Reyna to help too, Ionius added. All five cousins pitched in to help, and soon the rocks were sorted. Then Pythagoras fixed Thanos's and Ionius's pipes the same way he had fixed Octavius's. When they were finished, they rushed to the amphitheater. All the way, Pythagoras kept saying what great cousins they were and thanking them. He was looking over his shoulder when it happened. Pythagoras tripped. His pipes were in pieces on the ground. This is awful, Amara said, looking at the broken pieces. Well, I can't play, but at least I'll be there to hear you, Pythagoras said. Let's go. At the amphitheater, they waited for their turn. I want to stand in front, Amara said, but I'm shorter, Raina quarreled. Why don't you stand in line according to height, Pythagoras said. It should be Raina, Amara, Thanos, Ionius, Octavius. Pythagoras soon had the group composed. When the judges called Octavius' name, the whole group marched on stage. The audience began to whisper, is this a joke? Who's going to play? They didn't know what to think because a group of people had never been able to play together in unison. Pythagoras gave his cousins a nod, and they played their song. The boys piped with enthusiasm, the girls gracefully plucked their strings while standing clear of the swinging rocks. Ode to Apollo rang out perfectly in tune. When the song was done, there was nothing but silence. Then everyone applauded and cheered. The Lyra's rocks were still swinging when Pythagoras's father, when Pythagoras saw his father. Pythagoras, he said, I'm surprised to see you here. I finished moving the rocks with my cousin's help. It's good that you took care of your responsibilities, replied his father. The music sounded good, too. People are calling you the rock group. I like the way that sounds, Octavius said. This is funny, Pythagoras said to his cousins. You're standing in the same order as when you were playing, and your heights have similar relationships to the lengths of the pipes. So I was thinking... When we measure relationships, let's call them ratios for the first letters of your names. I'm not small now, Raina said happily. I'm the right size for our group.
That summer, Pythagoras was better at finishing his chores. His father even gave him a new set of pipes and let him play music with his cousins every day. Whenever they performed, they introduced themselves as Pythagoras and the Ratios, the first rock group. Historical Note Pythagoras was born on the Greek island of Samos around 569 BCE. Well known for his Pythagorean theorem, he also made important discoveries concerning musical tuning. Pythagoras discovered that notes that sound pleasant together have a particular mathematical ratio. He made a six-note scale according to the mathematical ratio. Centuries later, musicians added more notes to get the eight-note scale that we commonly use today. During the 2nd century CE, Greek mathematician Nicomachus of Gersa wrote of Pythagoras' experiment with musical strings. According to Nicomachus' story, Pythagoras hung weights from strings, similar to what young Pythagoras does in the book, and found a mathematical ratio for the harmonious sounds that he created. Today's scholars point out that the ratios as Nicomachus described them do correspond with the tones described. Using weights to attain this result does not work in practice. It's likely that Pythagoras never performed this experiment, but interestingly enough, Pythagoras did successfully perform similar mathematical experiments on another stringed instrument called a monochord. Like Nicomachus's tale, our story celebrates Pythagoras' discovery of the relationship between mathematics and music. Make an instrument using Pythagorean ratios. Using six identical glasses, Pythagoras probably used thin pottery cups, put water in each glass according to the amounts listed below, then make up a tune by tapping the glasses with a pen. Tuning Modern Instruments Modern leaders don't use rocks to tune the strings. The strings are instead wrapped around pegs which tighten or loosen the strings when turned to create tension. This is similar to how a guitar is tuned. The tension has the same effect as the weight of the rocks is meant to have for the lyres that Pythagoras tuned in his story.